Hey guys, this is Peter Mark Bones 88. And today for my next sci-fi movie review that I'll be talking about today is Predator 2, which stars Danny Glover, Gary Bussey, Ruben Blaze, and Bill Paxton. So this film actually came out in 1990. New director, Stephen Hopkins, which eventually he's a, a familiar director. He also directed um, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5, The Dream Child, and Lost in Space. But unfortunately, none of these two were really big hit box office. To tell you the truth, and this is only my own personal opinion, and agree with somebody, somebody else, but everyone has their own different opinions. So, Predator 2 is actually the best successful movie that Stephen, Stephen Hopkins ever did. So, for this second film, it was actually almost like an unrated movie, like an own, very own director's cut. So, technically, the MPA just considered they rated this movie as an NC-17 and it was actually the first film to be rated like that during the 1990s. So fortunately, due to all the, the huge violence and all the swear words, they curse a lot. But I'm not complaining about it. I love the violence and of course sometimes the swear words. They, every word you hear is like cursing a lot but especially mostly the time is where they blew up the F-bomb. Like a t like an atomic bomb like it's all created and it's raising up, launching up the big atomic F4 bomb and just blew up here in this earth and everyone is starting swearing of all the F bomb you hear. F this, F that, everywhere you hear it's just the F bomb. It just blew it up. Fuck yourself! Big huge epic F word. With uh, the Predator now, it shows like more gadgets, more weapons. We even see him like throwing this some sort of a blade disc that he just throws it at. That's a new high tech weapons. All these new weapons that the Predator has made. And for the infrared, they even add like the details to it. Like they show more of what the infrared, what he could see, what kind of infrared that he could use or shown by any like some sort of a creature or any place that he goes. Originally, Arnold Schwarzenegger was supposed to return from the first Predator movie, but since he refused and he didn't want to come back, he'd just rather concentrate on Terminator 2 movie. So they decided to bring new characters in. The only one who did came back for during the first film was Kevin Peter Hall, that he did The Predator. So this film starts out where in Los Angeles, 1997, big war in between of the Jamaican and Colombian against all these thousands of LAPDs, the SWAT teams. You see this big shootout that's going on. And while the Predator is seeing and watching this big, huge shootout, all the cops just like came down. And that's where Lieutenant Mike Heron shows up and stops the stops the Colombian gang members. One of the gang members, the, the leader, like tries to stop them and unfortunately, Mike Heron shoots him down, but his problem is he has the fear of heights. And along with his best friend, um, Detective Danny, he helps out. And then all of a sudden, um, his boss just like comes down, like starts threatening him and harass him. Well, not really harassing, but fortunately he threatens him, goes going on being a hero and shit. Then everything will go crazy. And that's where we introduced to Bill Paxton's character, which he's a lone ranger and complete cocky character. Throughout all these movie he's been in and especially where he like acts like a complete ass for himself some cocky guy but for his character for Bill Paxton um, performance he plays the same cocky guy over and over but I think the best successful that he ever did was in Aliens when he played as um, Hudson it's game over man game over that's only the best <laughs> line that he ever did <laughs> since he was hired and then after the Colombians were one of the two um, couples were like making out and doing something until the Jamaican like pops out. They start like revening their house and doing some voodoo magic. Voodoo magic until the predator shows up and starts like annihilating them one by one. Until the until Mike Heron and his teammate just come up and then all of a sudden they seen what happened. The Colombians couple. The woman was still alive, but fortunately. The Jamaicans were like hanging upside down along with the Colombian guy, but except all the Jamaicans were all skinned alive. 
And that's where until we meet up the special forces, the special agents called the DEA, which was Agent Keys, just tell him to like get out then he even tells um, Lieutenant Harrington that he has no idea what he's doing. But fortunately, Lieutenant Heron does know what he's doing, but fortunately threatens him to stay him out, stay out of his way. Danny detects and goes out searching for evidence, but right until he gets fallen into a trap by the Predator, eventually he got killed. So the next day, Heron meets up with Lana and Jerry Lambert, and he asks them if he can find his body or not. Unfortunately, unfortunately, nobody couldn't find his body. Somehow they didn't find it or where it was at. So on that night, uh, Heron decides to go and meet up with uh, King Willie during the dark alley at night. He asked him if, any, if he's seen anyone, but King Willie said no and Heron just left. And that's where the Predator shows up and both King Willie and the Predator face off in a fight off battle one on one. King Willie was defeated by him and he just chopped his head off. But I only wish that they could have just shown him I only wish that they just like shown the fight between of King Willie and the Predator of what was happening between those two. But instead they just rather just think of our imagination and we just know that the Predator is invincible. Knows knows where you're going, knows where to strike, and knows when to um never give up without a fight. Only if he does give up, he always have a way. The self-destruct sequence. So anyways, the Predator throws down on the subway, and that's where he big old collateral, like all these violence that was happening. He kills all these people off, just one by one, without even caring. But unfortunately for this Predator, he does care just a little bit. He didn't even shot the kid where he had a toy gun. He didn't even uh, kill Lana because um, she was pregnant. So the Predator has um, his honor and his res respects to others. And that goes the same with um, in Alien vs Predator, where the Predator was about to kill the guy that was almost looked like Bishop. Fortunately, that he knew that he was sick or he was probably dying. So that was like the honor that he wanted. So sometimes Predators, they do have honor, they do have like respect for others, like if they are dying or they're sick or if they're pregnant or it's just a toy gun, they won't shoot and they won't stop striking. I mean, they won't strike unless you have a real weapon. So the face-off between of Lambert and the Predator, so eventually he just takes his one last stand, ran out of bullets, <laughs> throws, his, throws the golf ball at him. I don't think he did hit him, I think he fortunately missed. And apparently he grabbed uh, one of the game members' knife, just charging at them, but fortunately, bam, he's dead. And with Heron just now going out searching, going after this Predator, the DAA stops him and he explains to him that he has no clue that what they're dealing with. They talked about a little backstory just back then 10 years ago was during the first film where the rescuers were just helping them out in the jungle just trying to rescue people that they were in the hostage and they explained to them what their their heat rays, their visionaries that the predator, that he's the he is the lion and he's the prey but this is his jungle. So Agent Keys and his um, special forces go down to the meat fridge and unfortunately they were just like camouflaging so that way the predator won't even see their heat from their bodies but the predator didn't has some new tricks on his sleeves all these different infrareds to check to see if there's someone in there and he did fortunately he saw where the lights and that's where the predator just strike them down one by one and right until lieutenant heron just interferes goes out to the predator himself somehow this really didn't really make sense to me that why did he shot the predator like in a far range all he shot was his helmet and the armor but didn't even get a chance to him riding the body and damage his gun blaster. But in a close range, he just like shooting him riding the body like a perfect target to him. Like every single shot, he shot him in the body. So that kind of didn't really make any sense. But he did shoot him down and so the Predator actually was um, playing possum on him. And he did a very good job doing that. So anyways, um. Andrew Keys just survived from that big blast, helped Heron, but instead the Predator throws that, that uh, blade disc right at him and just comes him down into a big beef of meat. So he goes up and tries to get away from him. He just tried to strike him down and then right after it, like he was going to activate the self-destruct button along taking Heron down. He takes the blade disc and chops, it, chops his hand off and goes down right into the next door kitchen. 
There are actually some scenes that are kind of funny and very hilarious. A couple of scenes that are funny and a couple of scenes that are just plain out ridiculous. So if Predator just um like heals himself, like heal his own wounds and especially his arm that was like making all these screaming noise. All the scream noise that kind of hurt my ear almost literally blunt almost like bleed my ears a lot. Well not a lot, just a little bit. So Heron goes after the Predator and sees down what's the Predator ship and also see is some um, all these different skulls that the Predator has been collecting. And a little um Easter egg and surprising that we see is an alien skull. So that was a a little cameo to the alien and a little bright distant future to see um alien versus predator but it was a different a disappointment to this film to other fans and audience. But I'll be reviewing that one soon in the sometime in the future. So the Predator and Heron just fight off, striking down blading and blading one by one, and the Predator was like getting ready to finish him off, but right after Heron just kills him off with his own disc. And that's where all these predators just come down and show up, help their either their brother or cousin cousin now since he was dead. The elderly one just um respectfully just gives him this um old gun which was during the seventeen fifteen. So the predators they've been they've been going through our history, like they've been through down the past, the present, or maybe sometime in the future. Who knows? So Heron like runs off because the ship was about to get ready to tank off. He does survive from the crash and until one of the DAs like um came down but they were simply too late and at the end he just he just said don't worry you'll get your next shot or your next chance whatever. So after done talking about this movie it's really interesting it's really graphic violence and it does relate to the comic books like to the comic issues of each and every Predator series and I think this film is really actually more really action and really more violent but due to the classic it had a, a low budget film I don't want to like compare I'm not saying the second film is really better than the first film but first film is really it had like more stopping more hard sci like a horror sci-fi mystery almost combining and for this second film it was like all action now like action sci-fi that was happening now it's almost it's almost a similarity to like the Terminator franchises, like it gone from a sci-fi horror to a sci-fi action adventure movie. And same with the Predator, like like the first Predator was like a sci-fi horror film, and the second film was like a much more sci-fi action, but due to all the big graphic violence, that was like almost like an unrated version. Clear that this um it took the direction that Stephen Hopkins wanted. He wanted the Predator to be more more stealthy, more, much more honoring, like much more of a warrior than less of a killer. So just to rate this film, I would have to give Predator to a 83 out of 100. For a sequel like this, it really did step up, but really disappointed to audience. And due to all the big graphic violence and even all the swear words blowing out the F-bomb and all that, fortunately for this second sequel, I would just recommend it, you know, just to watch it and to compare like for the Alien vs. Predator and Alien vs. Aliens vs. Predator Requiem. That was so disappointment. AVP was okay, but for Requiem was a big disappointment. And I do own this movie on Blu-ray and DVD. And this is PMR Bones 88 signing off and saying is, PEACE!